today we're back with the super buffing series and although i've probably covered most of the good towers already uh, one good tower i haven't covered yet is the sky spreader top path ace this one i have high hopes for similar to the tax zone we'll talk more about that in a little bit but yeah as usual i always like to start with the lower tiers just because well curious and uh, i could go far to plane but that's not super flashy or interesting of an upgrade so instead i'm going to try first off with the 203 because back when i did the big plane in fact that was my first super buffing video i didn't actually test out the previous upgrades for it so yeah i figured this would be pretty interesting you know if every single uh seeking dart was super buffed Again, with realistic buffs only, seeing as uh, this is stuff that you can get without mods, I just use mods uh, to make things a bit easier, and so that things don't get in the way and take damage, such as uh, this golden village over here. Now for your curiosity, here is uh, a fully buffed never miss versus uh, one bad. DPS, only about a thousand or so. I mean, it makes sense it isn't so high since uh, there's only 12 darts, and uh, honestly, if you want to see... Uh, True power, you need a lot more projectiles than that, and that's what, well, I guess, Sky Shredder will deliver on. It's pretty much got the same amount of, uh, attacks or projectiles as the attack shooter. 32, each volley, and uh, I took a look at the attack speed, it's actually pretty similar, so it's basically, uh, well, expect to get, I would assume, to the same around. It's hard to say which one will do better, because the, uh, good thing about the ace is that, well, uh, it's not just limited to a small part of the track where it can do damage, but on the downside... It does keep moving, so uh, ace micro uh, or ace positioning is of the utmost uh, importance. So sometimes I work to our detriment, sometimes to our advantage, but I think on long series since it's, well, a bit longer than resort, I would expect at least 200 for the Sky Shredder. That's all I'm gonna say. Now, uh, there's one other problem I noticed with this is that, uh, don't forget that the ace can also be buffed by the carrier flagship. 20% attack speed the carrier flagship gives to aces. Now, uh, this golden village actually does not give that buff even with the future upgrades i tried that already trust me so i think what we'll have to do here is well we will have to interfere with the damage a little bit but i don't want to do it right now because obviously in comparison to stuff like a never or miss that would do way too much damage right now so i think i'm only going to drop that down for like the final test for the sky shredder and i think if we add that to the equation then yeah it's probably got more juice in it than attack zone but uh yeah we'll see exactly later on as for the predictions on Never Miss here, man, I'm not sure. It's looking pretty good so far, so I would wager a 1... I definitely don't think it beats 140. 140 is a good round to guess, just because so many towers just don't have single target DPS, but I'm gonna be a little bit more bold and maybe say... Well, okay, that's not so bold to say 138, because 130 is also a round that a lot of towers die on, because 4 to 5 DT is very scary. But I mean, yeah, I think that's a good guess, seeing as, like, even 118 there... Those 4 5 DT, DT is getting pretty far. So yeah, that's my guess. 119 here, we should be chilling. Yeah, bands are popping uh, earlier enough, I would say. So we're good on that front. Anyways, the cool thing with the Never Miss Ace here is that I really don't have to do much in terms of uh, micro. Because right now everything seeks, so it really shouldn't make too much of a difference here. 131 is pushing on us a little bit, but I think we're uh, good. Still have a good amount left in the tank. Funnily enough, though, it kind of feels like it's getting pierce capped and... Uh, there is a 135 death. Well, I have mentioned before that every buff in the game does end up leading to a lot of towers having enough pierce to uh, not worry about a pierce cap. Uh, it does matter. Because, like, even if a patrol has one pierce, it can probably, with all buffs, go up to, like, 20 or 30, which isn't quite infinite. And that might be the cause of death here. Yeah, one last try, but I think that's the end for the never miss. Hang on for a second. I think I know what the cause of death is here, is that... We're not, we don't have the homeland ability up right when we're leaking, so... Uh, gotta do a bit of ace targeting so that we uh, catch the fortified surrounds. Close call. So maybe now we won't get pierce gap. So long as we beat the round before homeland wears out. Do a little bit of targeting here. Just make sure it's in the right position. And uh, alright, 135 is done. Proof once again that a little bit of ace micro goes a long way. So now we shall see if this is the round we do die on. Fortified TDT is... The round is so long that it's almost certainly going to be a little bit of cooldown of the homeland, so we only have CT active. And yeah, we're definitely falling behind. That's going to be GG, guys. Unless... Hang on. Homeland saving us. Oh, there's actually a chance. If we can survive the downtime, then uh, we can definitely survive the uptime of the homeland. 
damn, part of me kind of hopes we uh, lost there, so my prediction was correct. But either way, impressive. And now 140 is where we shall lose. Yeah, not even close to enough DPS. Charting will not do anything over here. Just simply not enough. All right, and now it's time for the Operation Dart Storm, which should hopefully perform better than the resting that's a uh, little bit more expensive and uh, does have 16 projectiles compared to 12 for a shot for the Nevermast. The only downside is, again, as you can see, uh, it doesn't seek anymore. But hey, at least you get some pretty visuals, am I right? Visuals over damage all day, every day. Don't count out the mini fighter plane missiles too, by the way. You can see it when you max buff it, just how quickly it shoots. There's just so many of them. So if you get to 140, I think there's a good chance that we can actually pop an F bad. But yeah, I'll try my best here, but I can't guarantee uh, if my ace micro is up to the task because uh, that's what you need to do to truly maximize the rounds. There's probably like 20 people in the community total that can pull off a uh, good enough micro to uh, maximize the ace. Me not included, but well, I'll try my best. The easiest way to uh, position your ace simply is using the reverse charting. Because you know where it's going to go when you just press this button. Simply the reverse of where it was going. Sometimes reverse charting can only do so much though because there's like a 10 second cooldown between using another one. And so yeah, being able to change uh, or knowing where the base will go after changing targeting is pretty important. However, I have not mastered that. But again, we shall see if uh, that is necessary to pull out. Now, 138 here looks a little bit sketchy. Yeah, we're gonna die to ceramics, bruh. Looks like our death there was due to homeland timing, so we'll go ahead and try again and see if that will help out. But man, even with homeland active, we died. So, but the problem here is that the round is so long that it's hard to keep up perfect micro. So, not sure what I could do much here other than maybe reverse targeting once in a while, just keeping simple. I'll do one, I think now. I see ceramics leaking. Leaked a little bit there. Holding strong. Nope. I, I just... Yeah. I don't think it's possible, actually. So yeah, somewhat surprisingly, the ODS does worse uh, in terms of how far it gets compared to the Nefermiss. However, I still want to see how it does against 140. So I'm just going to uh, get through this round first off. Because yeah, I'm curious to see the bad DPS for the ODS here. And uh, yeah, that already surpasses the Nefermiss. The missiles do a good amount, but you see... I'm having, I have a wing monkey right now just so it can go right over the, eight, the bad. And you see, once it goes over it, the DPS just... Uh, spikes up real quick so that's cool but is it enough to actually take down the f bed because right now it kind of feels like it'll be very close yeah we're only on layer two of five right that means it's going to pop loot at the exit so we might pop it but we'll die to like the insides so yeah not a good showing for the uh, tier four ace tier four tack did much 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 better but that's understandable again since this thing is very wildly inaccurate so let's go ahead and get Sky Shredder now so we can see, uh, well, how much better it is compared to the uh, ODS. Hints, much, much better. You can already tell the amount of attack speed and projectiles should make it, well, so much more reliable. Now with Home Activity, you can truly see the amount of damage you're getting. Slow it down. Right over the bat, it's like 5k DPS. Which surprisingly isn't as uh, much as I thought. Because I'm pretty sure the attack zone did like 20,000 per second on a single target, but... Uh, we'll see exactly, I guess, later down. Also, as I said, I would earlier, I've now added Cure Flagship over in the bottom right corner, and, uh, we should just take a look at the pop count just to see uh, how much it's taken away relative to the Sky Shredder. Well, Sky Shredder is going up in increments of tens of thousands, meanwhile, this is only a thousand or so, so, uh, yeah, no, hopefully it should be uh, less than what a temple normally takes away, which is, like, 5%. And, yeah, that's all the buffs you can give Sky Shredder. Actually, I forgot one more got to give uh, this extra upgrade on the village, which gives us now the Azili buff, which is, well, probably the best hero buff to get in the late game because attack speed goes a long way relative to, you know, plus a flat amount of damage. That probably would have been nice to have uh, for the previous test, but that's okay. It likely, well, either, yeah, even with the extra totem, it was very unlikely either of those would go through, go past 140 anyways. So luckily, I don't think we lost much from uh, not adding uh, that totem. But yeah, people are also wondering uh, in previous episodes, why not just go for all the buffs in the world, even if they're uh, not super realistic? Well, that's because I just prefer them to the test to be realistic. After all, that's why I started off with the Super Buffing series to see uh, how uh, every time we do uh, realistically uh, in a late game test. Because you can replicate this yourself right now. 
just by having the buffs right here, just swapping out the True Sun God Village for it. Well, a real True Sun God. And swapping out, yeah, that hero buff for an actual hero. Feels like I'm a broken record at this point because I bring up this topic, what feels like every other super buffing video. But yeah, just thought again I'd explain that rationale. Because, like, if I wanted to do an unrealistic mod test, then I would probably just enable a 100 times speed speed hack instead of these small buffs in comparison. Anyways, uh, but that's besides the point. Uh, it looks like we're not doing so hot. Even for 170 here, bad's getting really far, so it's it's actually looking impossible to get to 200 at this rate. I feel like I severely underestimated the perks of having, well, the Tower B stationary. Because, yeah, that certainly makes a big difference. Because even on Wing Monkey, you might notice that it's barely even on top of the F bat a lot of the time. And it doesn't matter how much, like, even if having global range, it still won't. Uh, the damage is still pale in comparison, feels like. Anyways, rounds are reaching. Uh, Real spooky hours at this point. Those DDs got scared really far. And there's five bats this round. So, uh, yeah, maybe it's time to pull out the stops. It's reverse targeting season, boys and girls. Uh, those DDs almost killed us too. And how there's a chance we don't even make it alive for these uh, ZMGs here too. But it seems like we are uh, we are going to have it under control. If we can beat just the anti-tier. Targeting needed. I'm going to try. There we go. Reverse targeting clutch there. Another reverse targeting. Oh, another clutch. And... Uh, should have homeland here for the last part, and 181 is done, but yeah. Feels like it's a matter of time before some random BAD or DT rank kills us. Also, is it just me, or is Sky Shredder just usually a bit more laggy than other towers at this round? I mean, believe me, it's no Bez, but uh, Tax Zone, I recall, was very, very smooth, I guess. We do have to add into account that the positioning of the Ace always changes, so the darts probably need to be calculated where they're shooting out uh, like all the time, on top of the extra... Projectile with the fighter plane missile, so it makes sense that it's not quite a smooth attack zone. Nonetheless, I'm glad it hasn't reached unbearable levels just yet, but it uh, feels like it'll get worse and worse as the rounds go. Also, take a look at the pop count of the character for, for like shit, in case you're wondering. Not really taking too much in comparison to Sky Shredder, so we're all good on that front. Feels like I'm gonna die to these DTs here, unless we can clutch up. Yeah, I might do some targeting this round. 185 kills us. Something tells me I probably gotta change up the homeland timing series, because that's probably what was killing me. So I did just that. Now we have homeland for the DTs here. And hopefully it should do better, right? Come on, switch starting. There we go. And that's the end of the round, right? I think so. Good. It does not get easier, guys. And don't forget, oh my god, <laughs> the bat the DTs from the bats kill me now. This is so annoying. Alright, let's not choke this time, shall we? DDTs. One more should be about to pop right about now. And the targeting. Nice snipe, nice snipe. You gotta be careful for the mobs under here too. Okay, snipe those. Got homeland. And this will be a tight one. Switch targeting. Nice. Yeah, you see when it's right on top, it just shreds instantly. And uh, there we go. The hellish round has been done. Well, I don't think we'll last uh, too many more rounds longer than this. Looks like I'm getting hit with another devilish round. This time we have uh, five BADs. DDTs. Oh my god, we lost a couple lives there. We're fine, though. But I think the problem is that we don't have enough D damage in the tank for the uh, other f bads. They are pretty damaged, but I don't think that's going to be enough. Yeah, we don't have enough over here. We're going to die DTs, aren't we? Yep. Okay, last try for this round here. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Each round at this point is actually taking quite a long time because the lag is definitely starting to creep up. Each round takes multiple minutes, and uh, yeah... Like, there's no specific targeting that gets you to target bats unless you, well, practice again the patterns. But even then, I don't know. Yeah, we died in the same DDT every time, so that's gonna do it, 186. Not as good as I expected, but that's because I compared it to the Taxa, which is probably, like, you know, the top, the top of the tier for max buffs. Either way, still pretty solid for a 35k tower, I would say. So yeah, hope you enjoyed the showcase, and if you have a... Another tower you want me to try out next, then let me know. Otherwise, uh, check out the Zero Buff playlist for uh, more of this stuff. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and see you next time.